Hi and welcome back to the channel and it's been way too long. I do apologize, I've just had an absolute dream of doing a lot of DIY stuff around the house and it's taken me far too long to be able to sit down back in front of here and actually creating content. Anyway, today I wanted to cover off a home lab gem that I found a few months back, which is called Hoarder. Now, it's not like the one that I've done previously, which was about asset management. This one is an AI-powered bookmarking tool. And I'll be honest, it's pretty sensational. Now, I'm always one forgets links, forgets content, tries to find stuff later on, always struggle to do it. I end up with bookmarks that just kind of spam across my screen and I get really, really frustrated. So actually finding a tool like this that could utilize also AI power to basically pull in information and tag that to relevant subjects, whether it be gaming, whether it be arcades, whether it be YouTube, who knows? But I found it really, really useful to be able to like help me on my day-to-day -day journey. Now it can also pull down screenshots and also take snapshots of the website at that particular point so that you can prevent stuff like link rot. Anyway, let me show you a little bit around Hoarder and then what I'll do is delve into how to actually deploy it. So let's delve a little bit into Hoarder, shall we? Now Hoarder, as you can see, I've basically had it into a local DNS name for myself. We'll talk about that a bit later, but you can always watch my pie hole video. But basically, this has got some bookmarks already added that I've done earlier. So you can find the ones with the latest uh, NVIDIA drivers, that kind of thing, arcade cabinets. You can pretty much get the gist of how this works. Now, what I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to show you simple ways to add new bookmarks. So let's say, for example, I wanted to try and buy a 1590 that is not happening anytime soon i could basically go to a website find the one i'm looking for so let's find the nvidia card here and i could absolutely just grab that go back into hoarder and paste that link in here so what that's going to do it's going to take a snapshot of that particular website at this given point in time, which is going to say zero stock, right? So now you will notice sometimes when you go into here, you may get this fail to fetch link content. Not to worry, this sometimes does happen. I find it generally happens with certain websites. So you just have to basically just force a refresh. And what will happen is it will then refresh and pull in for you. So you can see here, it's basically already tagged some of this for me. So you'll notice it's got NVIDIA, the 5090, graphics cards, gaming hardware, AI technology, which it obviously all has. Uh, you can see here, starting at, yeah. Um, and then I can summarize with AI as well. So this will really grab um, some information about that website and then give me a summarization of it. Um, really, really nice, really clear. So that's an easy way to do it. Now you can get hold of an extension as well, which works in Chrome and Edge. I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs. I'm sure you know by now how to install those kind of extensions. And then you just sign in. Now on the left hand side, you've got search. So what we can do in here, let's say we were looking for World of Warcraft. What I could do is basically type that in. And you'll notice it slowly starts to bring down some of the ones related to that particular element. So where it's got those, it's pulling them in. If it's got other words, it may find them. But let's say I wanted to look for World of Warcraft. I can click on the tag and get there that way, which is generally how the tag section works. So you can see all my tags. Um, I might be looking for, say, like NVIDIA. I can click on NVIDIA and it will give me all of those. So like that tagging system works flawlessly. I've got highlights. I've not used this yet, but basically you can highlight sections. Again, it's just a nice feature. I've not really played with it. And then archiving will be when you don't want to see anything anymore. So let's say, for example, I went back to this page and went, do you know what? I really don't want to see that anymore. Uh, rather than deleting it necessarily, it goes into your archive, so it's available there. Then on the left hand side, I've got stuff like my lists. Now, these are lists I've created myself. You can get AI to generate some of these. Um, but what I've done is created a couple of lists, then sub lists. But basically how they work is you can click on the plus, you can have a parent list, you can change the little icon here, which has got some nice emojis on. Uh, so you can pick all those emojis. Obviously, if you want the face in the clouds, you can absolutely use that. Um, 
but any of those you want to use, give yourself a list name. You can give a type list, manual or smart list. If you utilize smart list, all you need to do is actually just put some of the tags in that you want. So slightly uh, hyphen gaming, you can or hashtag gaming, you can absolutely utilize that. Um, so these are just some I created earlier and then you can obviously drop down and go and visit all of those kind of sites the way you want. So my GitHub, for example, where you'll find all the Docker stuff is linked in here. Um, but yeah, that's produced that for me nice and easy. Now the view modes, you've got a few different ones. You've got masonry, which I'll be honest, I've not really noticed much difference between masonry and grid. You can see in the image that it's kind of designed to, obviously, if you've got a bigger page, it will pull it up. Grid, yeah. List obviously gives you that nice simple list that's easy to do. And then compact is that really nice one, which is just easier. And you can see when you've basically captured those in. Now I can sort as well, so I can sort newest to oldest. That absolutely works fine, but if I go back to grid, I can then bulk edit as well. So if I want to bulk edit any of these, I can. And then if I just want to edit this or create a new nested list inside, I can do that pretty fine. Now the good news is in the user settings and admin settings, you get a few options in here. You'll notice dark mode is one of them. Make sure you use that so you don't burn those retinas. Uh, but in the user settings, I can go in and change various stuff in here. So you'll notice I've got some AI settings which I can change around. We'll talk about how to add the links and API keys later. But you can see that my API key, albeit blurred out, sits there. Uh, we've got the option to import as well. So if you've got bookmarks already done, right, you don't need to save them anymore. Shove them in here. It's so much more fun, right? So you can easily import from HTML, Pocket, uh, Omnivore. You've got Link Warden, so that's another one I mentioned previously. Uh, you can also do an export from here as well, so you can actually export the notes and links from here. Uh, you can also report broken ones. So when you get broken ones like this one, now this is because it sat behind a Cloudflare um, tunnel, most likely protecting this, you can basically do a recrawl and it will pull it through. Uh, and finally, some web hooks, but. I've not created any of those at this point. So you've got all of that available to you. Um, again, you can then add more um, users in as well. So if you want to use admin settings, you can create new users, you can create crawler jobs, you can see current actions, so you can then go and recrawl links, regenerate those kind of AI tags, etc. Uh, one thing I haven't shown you on the tag side, let's say, for example, this is where I'm going to get quite humorous, is I can add my own tag, right? So what I might do on this one, um, I will just type in, let's say, uh, out <laughs> of stock. And I've now created that new tag. And you might think that's quite humorous, but obviously that's where we are. And what you'll now be able to do is if it did save, you'll see the difference between these is out of stock is in gray. All the AI generated has got this nice, nice little sort of magical ping star that shows they've been generated by AI. Now, I'm not going to want to keep that one, so I'm going to remove it because hopefully one day they will be in stock. But anyway, you get the idea of how this works. So to take you on how to deploy it. Now, what you're going to need is a couple of things. You're going to need to set up a Docker Compose YAML file and you're going to need an environment file. Now, let's swap over and I'll go through those. So let's, uh, now we've created a Docker Compose file. So again, if you've not done any of this before, basically something like a sudo nano docker compose.yaml will absolutely do it. What I'd suggest is generally good practice is to have a Docker directory and a Docker Compose directory and then label them against what you're using. So in this case, I'd make one called Horda. Um, I'd also do an environment file as well. So in that case, I'd create a, uh, either a sudo touch.env or a sudo nano env would absolutely do the same thing but to go through the yaml file um, what we've got at the top here is the free services that will run with this um, you'll have the the web gui you'll have a search engine and then you'll have chrome which is basically an embedded version of chrome that will enable you to kind of do that um, the image capture and the screenshot capture that goes because basically it's running a website in the background internally so it can pull all of that in so a few things to notice, anything that's in this bright yellow color is basically an environment variable that I've passed in the EMV file. Obviously the labels are related to uh, traffic. So if you're not familiar with traffic, then by all means go and watch my video on it. Uh, although they're on version three point whatever it is now, 
the premise is still very much the same. There's a few new things that have happened in there. But either way, I've commented out a couple of things. So the usual stuff's in here that applies. Obviously, I'm going to always restart unless stopped. Uh, it's creating a data volume. So just here. Uh, again, this has come directly out of the instructions on Hoarder's website. You can bind to a mount here if you want to. I would say that's probably good practice, but for just this demo, I'm not really worried about it too much. Um, I've obviously commented out the ports because I'm using traffic, but if you're not going to use them, then that's the port it will be available on. So you'll be your IP address, and then 3000. Again, it can be changed if you need to. I'm pointing to an environment file. And then in the environment, I've got a couple of other... Uh, services that will be running one is the melee search and because it's inside the docker containers i can then just link directly to the docker name and the actual ports uh, you'll notice in here i've added an open ai key now again this is optional you don't have to use this but obviously to utilize the ai scrubbing you've got a couple of options you can either use open ai and literally pay nothing or very low to nothing to use it. You will have to buy some initial credits, or you can use Olama if you've got a GPU available. Now, I will do maybe a video on that at a later date, and when I can actually get hold of a 50 series to actually host some local AI. Um, yeah, just host some local AI, really. Um, Proxy-wise, uh, obviously I'm using Proxy Network because I'm running this through a reverse proxy. If you're not, then you don't need to use that. Um, you will notice I'm using uh, Network Hoarder as well. Now, the reason for that is all of these services need to talk on the same network. You don't need to call it Hoarder. You can call it whatever you like. As long as all three of these have exactly the same network, that will work. Um, but these elements in here, these labels, just be aware if you're going to use the ones in my GitHub to change certain variables, like that URL, for example. Uh, the Chrome engine, basically, is just sitting there. So again, you can just add those in. If you want to know what every single little bit does, then by all means, go and have a look at the Horda website and it will talk you through those. There are some additional commands available, but I'm not going to use any of them. Um, and then very much at the bottom here, again, I'm just mounting another volume in here that's basically going to be uh, Melee Search. Uh, again, on the North Horda network and then just stating those two volumes so they're available to it which is quite straightforward. So when it comes to the environment file, now I'm not going to show you my direct one because that would just be mad, wouldn't it, right? Because I'd then go and have to change some of the security keys and the API key that I've got listed. Anyway, what I've done in the environment file is quite straightforward. I'll show you inside my GitHub repo, but basically sitting in here is a link to the data directory. So again, if you do happen to change this, make sure you change it in here. Uh, the Horda version, if you want to set a specific version rather than the latest release, you can change that in here. Uh, the Melee address is basically as it's hosted here, it's absolutely fine, but if you were to host it somewhere else in another Docker container, you need to link it in there. The master keys I'll talk about in a short while because we need to create them, but they are basically just a base 64 random string. They don't need to be something you need to remember. It's just something in the background that it needs to know. And then obviously the URL that needs to be available needs to match the one you expect it to be. Now, if you're not using a DNS name like myself, this would absolutely be your IP address and the port number you're looking for. And at the very bottom there, you'll notice is the open a I key. Now, where do you get that? I hear you ask. So to find your open AI key, you will need to find it, which is obviously key. Yeah, <laughs> get it. Um, obviously it's key. So you will need an open, open AI account. If you've ever used chat GPT, you most likely have one already. You will need to upload some credits. Now I'll be honest, I will show you my usage to date and the cost to date. It is that absolutely nothing i've not even used point of a dollar yet it's absolutely insane how many of these calls you can do but if you want to have a look at the activity you can see where they're all coming from who they're going to so you can see the api requests have gone in um, i'm not really consuming anything in particular in the amount of tokens that i'm utilizing it's not really anything you should ever worry about so just something to be aware of but anyway uh, if it comes back to, let's say, your API keys, 
you're just go and create them in here. So you just create a new secret key, off you go. Like I said, you will need to set up some kind of payment. I just literally uploaded $5 and yeah, I've not even used one yet. So whenever I do get to a point of using it, then yeah, absolutely fine. There are some literature on the Hoarder website to kind of talk you through how many you'll be able to consume without even actually using a dollar. Now, I think it was many, many, many thousands before anybody actually even saw any particular usage. But if you're not happy with sending these calls out to an open platform, then obviously you can host with Olama later on. So I now need to go back and show you something else we need to do here. Now, like I mentioned earlier, without this EMV file, we need to basically add some keys so some random base 36 keys so they sit here so this command let me just over zoom that in a little bit and let's clear the screen so as you can see anytime i click that it's just going to create a random string each time that's available to you. So again, that command is there. Uh, you will be able to find a lot of this on my uh, docs itinerary when it's actually up and running again. On my website, you'll be able to find the instructions of how to go through this exactly as per T. But worst case, just go and get the stuff from GitHub. Now, once this is all done, all we'd need to do is we've got our EMV file. We're going to add all that information in our API key in there. Obviously, it's protected from that point. Is we would just do the usual sudo docker compose up forward slash d. So that would actually go and run and get our system up and running for us. So once that's done, uh, it's obviously just going to say this is uh, already done. So it doesn't need to pull anything. But that would go off and run and pull all of these itinerary bits down for me. Once that's done, I'd be back over to my Docker window and be able to navigate around. Now, one thing you will need to be aware of the first time you create it is you won't be signed in. So let me just sign out here. Uh, you will get the sign up screen. So when you sign up the very first occasion, basically you'll be prompted to sign up. There isn't a pre set up uh, username and password. Just go and create a name, email, password, confirm your password. If you use a password manager, great, hit it in there. But if not, you can just sign in using credentials you already got and it will be able to sign you in automatically. So just something to be aware. But I absolutely love this tool. So there we are. That is Hoarder in a nutshell. And if you have liked this video, please yeah, hit the like and subscribe. And if you want to send me a GTX 5090 in the post just for being a good egg and putting this up line, then again, do so if you can get one of them in 2027. Anyway, this has been Express IT Tech, hence the new rebrand. And as always, I'll see you next time.